All right, YouTube, thanks for tuning in. Well, I've got something interesting for you here today. You may have seen this on Banggood's website, but this is a 3-gram camera, 600 TV line, um, with a video transmitter built into it. We see a little antenna. It's 5.8 gigahertz. We've even got little dip switches on the front there that we can use to change the uh, frequency if we choose to. Um, this is the, as it's listed on their site, FPVAIO 600 TV line, 170 degree mini camera, 5.8 gigahertz, 8 channel transmitter, all in one, only 3 grams. It's currently selling for $39.99. I'm pretty sure when I picked this up a month ago, I paid about $32. Uh, Sebi Docky got one of these and he tested it. Uh, it was it was a pretty brief test and, and showed that basically there's no uh, power regulator in this so once you plug it into a quad you got lots of noise on this motor spin up so knowing this I thought well I'm gonna still go ahead and get one see what I can do with this um, so I've got my one of my little mini quads here I've also got a uh, boss cam handheld DVR um, which works out real nicely I think I've still got the screen protector on this eh, you can see it fine anyways so let's turn this on you should be able to see it sitting here, and I'll hold it up when we get a picture. Uh, we'll plug in the quad. Got our flashing lights. And I've got this rigged up just, I've got it soldered directly to the leads on the board, and then I just kind of draped it through here, being as it was naturally open, no reason to cut additional holes in it. And then we'll plug, whoops, bump the camera, sorry. I've got to take this lead off. And we'll plug the camera in. You can see we get a picture. Let me uh, point the camera more towards the quad and you can see the flashing lights. Maybe compare them to the background a bit. But the delay is not terrible. Um, see if I can get all these. So it's pretty reasonable. Um, I don't have a method to timing that delay or otherwise I'd show you. Uh, the one thing I did notice about the camera immediately and you see that I've gone ahead and put the TV little stand on it is that this sucker gets pretty hot. So at that pointing at that let's go ahead and bind this. And you'll see on the screen here, hopefully you can see that, that once we spin this up, pretty much at all, we're going to get lots of lines. Hopefully you can see that. Just touch the throttle here. Uh... So, too much noise. Doesn't, not going to work for FPV, of course. I don't know what they actually plan for the installation for this little camera, but that is not it. So, I knew this going in. And, you know, 32 bucks for a video transmitter that's 5.8 gigahertz, 8 channels, selectable channels at that. Um, you, you just you can't expect this to have everything in it. Um, I don't know what you would use it for just as it, uh, itself. I guess you could plug it into a battery and stick it out your front window for a, you know an event or something that might be going on maybe a parade you want it to be able to record or have another viewing angle I don't know um, this is a I, I sorry I didn't say this earlier but this is a um, CMOS camera it's not a CCD camera um, it has the frequency range 5705 to 5925 over the 5.8 gigahertz so it's eight channels and it, it was set by default to channel 8 on mine which all the switches are up on the front. Um, it's a 200 milliwatt video transmitter and the distance they have reported is less than 300 meters which quite frankly if you get more than 100, 150 I'd be surprised really. Um, and it's the power supply that it supports is 3.7 to 5 volts so 1S battery was, is recommended. You can find all this information on the Banggood website if you just look up the FPV AIO 600 TV line or TVL 
And the little stand does come with it, and it's a little bit wonky. Um, it doesn't necessarily go together great. <laughs> I used some glue on mine to make it all stick together, because otherwise it wouldn't hold anything up. Anyways, back to the noise. So we know we've got noise, and we knew this was going to be an issue. So I went ahead and picked up a couple of these. They're the Pololu uh, voltage regulators, and this is just a little tiny guy. Uh, this is the uh, step up, step down voltage regulator S8V3A. And this is your little dial to where you can turn it up or turn it down. Um, this one, I believe the operating range or the output is adjustable from 2 volts to 12 volts. So it has a pretty wide range. That's kind of why I picked it up. I picked up three of these. They're what, nine bucks a piece. Um, great company. You never hear a bad thing about any of their stuff. They don't necessarily make their electronics for RC, but they are a robotics and electronics um, store. So I have this one tuned to precisely 3.72 volts. And on the back, we've got the VIN in and VIN out. So I need to make sure this goes this way. So we're going to do an obvious and another test here with our voltage regulator in here. And this voltage regulator also gets hot. And it's noted on their website that under normal operation it could be could get hot enough to burn you. And that's one of the big reasons why I wanted to turn it down to the lowest possible voltage. Because there's no reason to have it running any more volts through there if it's not necessary. So you can see we've already got a picture again. Let me see if I can hold this up enough to where nothing's really changed there. But what has changed, if you can keep your eye on the DVR there, is that when I bind this up we spin it up, we still get some lines on there, but it's dramatically reduced. It's very, very usable. And even as you increase your throttle, the lines don't increase hardly at all, at least as far as I can notice on this screen. I know this is small, and I don't have a, a bigger screen that's neat, or otherwise I'd have it here. This is really the better, like, best thing I could do, otherwise I'd have cables and batteries laying out here in order to be able to power a different screen. So, there's a little picture of everything around here. So that works. Great. Uh, this doesn't seem to be getting nearly as warm as it does when you have it running at a higher voltage and this has to step things down. Um, it technically shouldn't need to run any higher than 3.7 volts and the battery shouldn't be giving any more than 3.7 3 volts. But one thing I did notice when I was tuning this is when it was over 3.7 volts I felt like the batteries were really being drained. So I'm wondering if this has, uh, and I don't know the proper terms for it, if it has some ability to draw um, more voltage in order to fulfill the, the settings that you have on it. Um, because I had, in one case, I had a battery it didn't, it was actually a bigger battery. I think it was a, a 600 milliamp battery, and it didn't last five minutes. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. I tuned this to 372. I went just over the minimum. Um, no, no real reason behind that other than turning this little dial enough to get it right at 3.7 seemed to be next to impossible. I did have help holding... Um, the voltmeter on there to get a, a good measurement, but um, it just didn't seem like we could get it right at 3.7. So 3.72 was as close as we can get it. So that's pretty cool. Now, my plan for this is to mount this camera inside, which could be a risk because of the heat. Um, and I'm going to use hot glue in order to mount it. I measured um, before I got it. There are a couple of rods that run through the body that I should be able to mount this right in front of those rods and the camera lens stick just out the nose. Now the only downside is when you're flying I'm going to need to point the camera up 
and I'm probably going to have to look through quite a bit of prop wash, but maybe not. We'll see. Um, I think the next thing that I'd probably like to do is do a proper range test. You know, they're saying less than less than or equal to 300 meters. Um, quite frankly, I'd be happy with half of that. If I get 150 meters with this, I I think that's very good. Um, so I'm going to have to get some help to actually show that on camera. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to put up an image of Google Earth or something to show you where I tested it. So that'll be next up. I'll take it outside. We'll do a range test. I may go ahead and mount it in the quad and do the range test that way. Or I may have to actually, you know, put everything on a board and, you know, walk the camera around behind the quad. And maybe that would be somewhat visually interesting or something. Um, so I'll do that next.